Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, shocking revelation of consumer complaints during the festive season. New maternity hospital to ease pressure on CWM. And modernization leading to cultural loss in Commonwealth countries. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spate. Over $1 million worth of complaints from disgruntled consumers were recorded by the Consumer Council during the festive season. Chief Executive Pramila Kumar says 771 complaints were registered over the three months, which on average is 257 complaints per month. Rachel Nuth reports this is the highest number of complaints to ever be recorded during this period. These complaints were recorded over the Christmas, New Year's back-to-school period between November and January 31st. We managed to solve a very large number of complaints as well, uh, taking into consideration some of the pending complaints we had from the previous quarter. So all in all, we managed to recover about $1.4 million and we have put it back into consumers' pocket. The council also received 763 calls through the National Consumer Helpline where consumers either lodged complaints or sought advice. What really contributed to this uh, staggering number, I would say, is because of the National Consumer Helpline, uh, which consumers find it very easy uh, to, to lodge their complaint or to seek advice. Some complaints were forwarded to the Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission on non-compliance grounds. Uh, the number of complaints that has been received over the festive season is usually high given that this is usually the period in which consumers go out and they shop and it is during these times that our compliance uh, on the field is uh, team is uh, high in numbers. The top 10 complaints registered were in the areas of landlord and tenancy, electronic goods, food and drinks, construction services, advertisements and promotions, hardware, second-hand motor vehicle, internet services and insurance. Rachel Nath, FBC News. Over 300 Fijians gathered at the Sugarcane Growers Council building in Lautoka yesterday to put forward their concerns and problems to the Prime Minister. People from all walks of life were part of the consultation and issues raised varied from land education, health, drainage and even taxi permits. Philippe Nakaso reports. People in Lotoka came in numbers hoping to get solutions and answers to their problems during the Prime Minister's consultation. Some students who have applied through TELS have had their applications rejected even though they have passed all the criteria. See, uh, I will notice a contact because we need to look into it. Why is, uh, uh, why is it uh, rejected? Truck owners also took the opportunity to out forward their requests. So I'm just humbly, humbly come to ask for your favor on duty. Uh, if you could uh, please help to waive uh, our duty concession on uh, our truck, uh, which helps uh, medical in the remote places. The Prime Minister in response directed the truck driver to the relevant authorities for a solution. The landowners also queried about idle land. La undeve Undeveloped lease. It has been leased, but no developments have taken place on that land, and we do not get anything in return as landowners. I have written to the TLTB asking them to do something, as we landowners want something in return as well. It was approved recently that any Itoke lease given out and no developments are done on that land, the landowners will receive 25% of share. And if there are developments done on the land, the landowners will receive 20% of the share. The Prime Minister's Western Division tour ended today. Philip and I, Caso, FBC News. A new hospital in McCoy, 8 Miles, will relieve the pressure on the maternity ward of Suva CWM Hospital. Pranita Prakash reports the much-anticipated new 16-bed maternity hospital for low-risk mothers opened today. 
The health minister says the new maternity hospital will ease the pressure and demand at the CWM hospital. The new health facility has been equipped with an enhanced equipment and resources to take our services to a much, much higher level. It is here that our expectant mothers will get the much needed medical care and advice to give birth to healthy babies. Here our children will be vaccinated against diseases that once preyed on their health. It is also here that our women, our children and families will be educated about maintaining proper diets and healthy lifestyles that will help prevent NCDs. Rosie Akbar says specialist care will be provided at the hospital. The Makoi Maternity Unit has been built with an investment of 6.83 million Fijian dollars by the Fijian government. Further to it, more than 300,000 Fijian dollars of latest medical equipment has been purchased for the new unit to ensure that we provide a higher standard of maternal, maternal health care services to population of Makoi and the neighboring communities. Gynecologist Dr. James Fong says the maternity hospital is a state-of-art facility. The project was completed in the last quarter of this 2016-2017 uh, budget year. And the equipment for this facility are all brand new and of very high quality and have been sourced from reputable suppliers of medical equipment. The new facility will be manned by doctors, midwives and nurses who have been trained in maternal and child health care. This will also broaden services for child in primary care as it will be provided under one roof. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Commonwealth countries have pointed out the realities of people easily forgetting their heritage and becoming too modernized. During a museum workshop in Suva today, more than 40 participants stressed on the importance of culture and how to revive it. Kelly Vavala reports. Social media, climate change and the influence of westernization in the Pacific are some of the contributing factors to why many people lose their true identity. People have you know, developed different styles of dressing. So um, in the past we have women who dress like presentably, they hide every part of their body. This days is different from way back. Other participants say the young people rarely speak in their native language and dialects. People used to live in Samoan houses, um, but sadly nowadays people tend to live in um, European houses because um, it's much safer during our cyclones. Usually we, in the past we have our own traditional games. Nowadays, uh, people, uh, young generation yeah, tend to, to use the new games like football. Fiji Museum Director Cipriano Nemali says the Commonwealth Association of Museums Workshop have come up with solutions on how to preserve culture. The, the most important thing is that we work together uh, hand in hand in terms of um, uh, promoting the safeguarding and of course the, the continuity and transmission of our practices. Participants also say it's important for people in Commonwealth countries to have proper knowledge about their culture and how their ancestors used traditional methods to survive. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Reports of flash flooding came from most areas in the Western Division this morning. This comes as severe tropical cyclone Gita Category 3 moves southwest, further away from the group. The associated rain bands caused flash flooding in several places, which include Semo Village in Singatoka. Matan Matani Y Road in Tavua and the Yalandro Flat in Ba were all underwater, while the Malele Bridge was partly damaged by flood waters. Officers from the Sambeto Police Station, along with the National Fire Authority, had to assist a 23-year-old woman deliver her baby before taking them to Nandi Hospital. Still to come, awareness starts ahead of Kawakawa and Donu Ban and USP to introduce more vernacular courses. Details after the break. Bula, Kera Mai Singatoka, Kera Ndo Tali Taka Navarro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. I have an initiative, which is from Utkola, on the Tali Taka Navarro Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. I have a civil Tali, the Murara Mai Naomani, and Roma, we do Tali Taki and the Venezuela, we do the Rong, Barong and Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. The Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti in Wonga and VNN.
Fisheries Ministry will make sure every Fijian is well aware of the ban introduced on fishing for Kawa Kawa and Donu before it becomes active in June. According to Fisheries Minister Semi Koroi Lavesau, awareness campaigns will be conducted to brief people on how important the ban in preserving fish stocks really is. Savaira Thambo reports spawning period for the two fish species is from June to September. It was noticed many Fijians are still harvesting fish species during the spawning period despite pledges not to. The government is not doing this just to make their life uh, difficult, mm -hmm. but it is for a reason so that these resources are sustainable going forward into the future. Fishermen from outer islands will be monitored by members of the fishing association during the spawning period. The association was established last year and works closely with the ministry. Well, basically what we'd like to do is use the association to raise awareness mm -hmm. and also help them to uh, teach officials within uh, their communities on the importance of sustaining these important two species. Meanwhile, the ministry is currently working closely with legal advisors from the Solicitor General's office to draft penalties for those who break the Kawakawa and Dono fishing ban. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. With the aim of valuing and giving importance to the rich Pacific culture, USP is planning to offer more vernacular courses. Vice Chancellor Professor Rajesh Chandra says the university will be offering Rituman language courses soon. The university currently offers Hindi and Fijian languages as part of its diploma and degree courses. As part of ensuring that the university supports uh, Pacific cultures, uh, Pacific identity, we are increasing the number of uh, vernacular languages that we offer. Uh, so um, uh, this um, you know, uh, planning for um, offering the treatment would be in line with that. Similarities in Chinese and Indian cultures were highlighted by the president of the Chinese Association of Fiji, Janice Sito, at the Chinese New Year celebration in Suva today. The Chinese New Year begins on the 23rd day of the 12th month of the Chinese lunar calendar. Lawata Wanganivava Langi reports this is the year of the dog. Also known as the Spring Festival, the Chinese New Year is the most important traditional event on the Chinese calendar. The Chinese culture and the Indian culture, it's actually, I think, quite similar. And you'll relate to some of the stories that I'm going to tell you. Because even now, when we go around all the Chinese shops in Suva, so even those that are owned by the Indian Fijians, they're asking our lines to go in and actually, you know, um, dance and ward off the evil spirits and wish their businesses all their success. So that's what you'll see if you happen to be in. This was the first time FCCC divisional officers and Suva staff celebrated the Chinese New Year. This is part of FCCC's uh, general, uh, general program where we appreciate all cultures. Fiji is a, is a very diverse country and we celebrate different cultures. Uh, and there is some good lessons that can be learned. Uh, as you uh, know, uh, 2018 is the year of the dog. Uh, uh, generally represented by certain uh, aspects or qualities such as being hardworking. The Chinese youth will perform the lion dance around Suva on Saturday to conclude the celebration. Chinese Association President Janice Sito wishes all Fijians a Happy New Year. Lawata Wangani Vavalangi, FBC News. To international news, the alleged suspect behind the Florida high school shooting that left 17 people dead has made his first appearance in court. 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz was reportedly a member of the white nationalist group. The FBI is also investigating the way they handled a tip-off about a comment made by the suspect on YouTube, saying he wanted to carry out an attack on the school. Ahead in sports, Top Gun starts strong at Nasinu Sevens, but we join Rachel now for the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. Forum Centre to open new opportunities for bar women. And in growing Fiji, major water pipe repairs plan for Suva. Stay with us. Bula FM number 2 in the
Leading business tonight, women in Bar couldn't be more happier in extending their ver various businesses after the construction of the Women's Training Centre. Bar Women's Forum President Maria Dotton says the centre has given them many ideas of helping women who wish to put their talents and skills to good use. Anna Ruvula reports. It is an exciting time for business women in Bar as they can now enhance their knowledge and skills with the new training centre. We have a uh, literacy department for those ladies who want to learn how to write, how to read, because some of them have been to school. And of course, the computer lab for those who have uh, achieved, attained a higher education. This new facility will promote women's participation in economic activities and enrich vocational training. The center was funded by the Japanese government that believes women are the backbone of families. Women are standard bearers of every society. Apart from enriching our lives by being our mothers, sisters, wives and daughters, they are also resourceful economic agents. They work as entrepreneurs, agriculture and industrial laborers and are also self-employed. The center is equipped with state-of-the-art sewing room, kitchen, two additional training rooms and a hall. $493,000 have been spent on the center. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. Amalgamated Telecom Holdings has launched an application with the Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission for the restructuring of two of its wholly subsidiary companies, Telecom Fiji Limited and Fiji International Telecommunications. Telecommunications Limited. The proposed internal restructure involves TFL acquiring Fintel and will be made by the way of transfer of assets and liabilities. This is scheduled to be finalized next month. The exercise is part of ATH's ongoing effort of restructuring, of group restructuring. And we now join Sharon from HFC with the latest from the money market. Thank you. A brief update on markets. The U.S. dollar dropped to a near three-year low against a basket of currencies today, headed for the biggest weekly loss in nine months. In their releases this morning, U.S. producer price index increased 0.4% in January. Their initial jobless claims were as expected, but their continuing jobless claims or unemployment was above expectations. Meanwhile, weakness in the U.S. dollar fueled gains in most central European currencies. Closer to home, New Zealand business PMI index dipped in December but saw a nice bounce back in January to 51.2. And that's all for now. See you next week. Thanks, Sharon. Looking at today's current exchange rate set this morning for the Fijian dollar. The Fiji dollar was on its way up against the Chinese yuan, the US dollar, the Kiwi dollar, rather the Aussie dollar and the PNG Kina. And it pretty much held a fought against the rest of the currencies we cover. As for the commodities market, oil prices were up at $61.47 a barrel. Gold rose to close at 1,353 an ounce. And silver was down to close at 1680 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, a number of water pipe repairs in the Greater Suva area are currently being undertaken by the Water Authority. The General Manager Pro Special Projects says many of the pipes have deteriorated due to old age. He says these repair programs are carried out to ensure consistent water supply is available, assets are maintained, and taxpayers' money is put to good use. We have pipe replacement programs currently in place. We have a meter replacement program currently in place that has been running for around uh, almost three years now. We have a boundary valve replacement program. These are valves that are causing problems in, in areas. These programs have been, have been running now for three years uh, consistently on a yearly basis based on funds that are requested from, from government. And that's a wrap from Business This Week at Nada Sports. See us, Jamie, with the latest. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening. Coming up, and Bar ends the Champions League campaign with a win. This and more after the break. I have a virus <laughs> that is a virus <laughs> that is a virus 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 that is a
हम लोग बार टाउन के केरियर ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफ एम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफ एम हाय मैं संध्या नारायण रेफरी से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफ एम सुनते हैं मिर्ची एफ एम आला मिर्ची हम एसवीन तो कहता हूँ वो आके मिर्ची एफ एम में सबसे अच्छा गाना बजे मिर्ची एफ एम इट्स हार्ट The Fiji Airways Flying Fijians extended squad for the 2019 Rugby World Cup is expected to be named after the June test matches. Flying Fijians coach John McKee says local and overseas based players that are vying for a spot in the squad have until then to impress. Roni Tuinuku reports. The Fiji Airways Flying Fijians coach John McKee says an early start would give them the advantage to select the best team to represent Fiji. You know, it's a big year, big year, and I, and I really want to get settled on the on on our on our World Cup squad. I think June's probably the last opportunity for, to introduce some new players to the group, and 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 then, then pretty much settle on our on our World Cup group for November and and into next year. Players will also need to improve their worth in provincial games if they want to don the national jumper. 15's game at the top level is, is, is a good thing. You know, we've got the we've got the home test series with, with Romania, Georgia and Thailand. You know, some, some big test matches here for us in June. Fiji Rugby Union Chief Executive John O'Connor says the Flying Fijian side has a busy schedule this season. In the uh, end of the tour and then uh, end of the November and then we get into 2019. It's all preparation for the World Cup. Eh? Fiji plays Romania, Georgia and Tonga in the media test this year. Eroni Tuinuku, FBC Sports. The Fiji Warriors lost to the Queensland Reds 17-15 in the Reds' final Super Rugby preseason match in Australia last night. Fiji led 15-10 in the 58th minute after a try from Ratu Naisa Navuma, but the Reds hit back with a try and a successful conversion five minutes from full time. The Ulu and Nakao Babas were close to missing the Ram Sami Nasinu Sevens this morning at Ratu Dakambao Park. Just hours before the start of the tournament, players were told they might not be able to compete due to a lack of finances to transport the team from Ra. However, players gathered enough to get to the tournament venue, then got through day one unbeaten. Roni Tuinuku with, it, with the story. The struggle is real for the Ulu and Nakao Babas as they push on their limits to be part of the competition. I've been uh, without uh, our transport, uh, that's not uh, really a problem. And the boys are still uh, sticking together as a team, uh, regardless of uh, what happened, no transportation or what. Uh, that's a bonus for us, and we must thank the boys for giving uh, their time and uh, spending their money. Dubbed as one of the local sevens champions, the team from Nakorotumbura sees rugby as an opportunity to succeed to develop the players, to be able to have some opportunity locally and overseas to have a contract and uh, succeed in their rugby career. That's one of our main aim. Meanwhile, former National 7 squad member Wanga Rombana Kandavu aims to make a return to the World 7 Series. Uh, looking forward for the uh, Fiji team to be back into the squad. Uh, there's a lot of newcomers uh, in the Fiji team and uh, hopefully to fight back for my position if there's any door uh, open. The Ulu in Ragas won all their pool games and are focused on the elimination that will be played tomorrow as well as the finals. Eroni Tuinuku, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, China's national teams also competed at the Nasinu 7 tournament earlier today. The visitors rate sevens in Fiji very highly and are here to learn as much as they can about the sport. Luciana Tangedakimba reports. It's all about exposing players at home of the Sevens Rugby for the Chinese national team. For us, we think about uh, in Fiji, the rugby is, is the top spot. So everybody play us. Even like things with a little boy, they, they play it. And the first day of competition saw the side coming out on top. So, uh, girls, we have two teams. The, the first game, the boys, we lost. The second, the second game, boys win, yeah. So the level here is quite good. So. Meanwhile, men's captain Ma Chong says coming to Fiji for local competitions was a right choice. We don't, like, we don't have lots of people playing rugby. We hope uh, more and more Chinese people get in to play rugby. 
The tournament will continue tomorrow at No Soares, right to the Kumbau Park. Luciana Tangi the Kimbao, FBC Sports. The Bar football side rounded up its OFC Champions League campaign with a 4-1 win over Tupapa FC of the Cook Islands. Bar striker Samuela Nambenia scored a hat-trick before Naren Rao registered the side's fourth goal. Here are the highlights for the match. Abhinu Swami's ball in, and he has come for it, and Enia has cost his team a goal. It's an easy finish, and at last, Bar have scored in the OFC Champions League. Samuela Nibenia. And here comes for it, and he's missed it again. And it's ended up in the back of the net. And it's a low-key celebration for Tupapa. It's slid in, and Nibenia gets the hat-trick. There's a cut back. Shot from Latimer. Go. And at last, Tupapa have a consolation strike to celebrate. Oh, that's a nice ball chance. And finally, a goal for Bar to set the record straight. They go 4 1 up. And that's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and in new media. Check out the company that's making smartphones more affordable for customers. Details after the break. Bula, Kero Mai Sinatoka, Kero Ndotali Taka Navarro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Domo Iviti. I have a runner in the in new media in the U.S. and around the world, many poor people don't have access to smartphones. But a Silicon Valley company is offering phones to customers in the U.S. and Mexico who pay in installments. If they don't pay, the phone is turned off remotely. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. It's the super great Friday. It's so exciting because it's the weekend. Now you might have noticed the change in the weather pattern. It's quite humid but cool winds are so helpful. Looking at the west for today, a hot one with sunniness all over. Eastwards from Pakhaba to Suva, humidity spread through the area and few showers tonight will ease that for us. And up north, variable clouds with a pinch of sunshine. At sea, northerly winds 20 to 25 knots with rough seas. As for the tides, low tide will be at 1.32 a.m. with high tide at 7.44 a.m. Sunrise will be at 6 a.m. For tomorrow, a humid day can be expected. However, light showers will be around. Tomorrow's temps, all the centers will be moderate at 30 degrees. And looking further onto Sunday, it looks like a picnic day. It will be all clear and I hope the forecast stays that way. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we ask, do the younger generation in Fiji need more education on culture? Of course, yes, um, because a culture is very important to create their own uh, identity. Definitely, yes. Um, for a lot of reasons, but one of them is there are knowledges that we need to give them, pass on, that will help them um, live their everyday life and uh, be sustainable in the future. We should learn more about our culture because it, uh, yeah, it uh, shows the, uh, where we came from. Eh? Most of the time we spend much time with other races, maybe in schools and we tend to copy their cultures and this is really a good idea for the younger generation to have more education on culture.
Recapping the main story, shocking revelation of consumer complaints during the festive season, new maternity hospital to ease pressure on CWM, and modernization leading to culture loss in Commonwealth countries. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we are asking, should those who make hate speeches be prosecuted? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day, the beautiful shot of the sleeping giant in Sambeto Nandi, sent in by Sabanava Navuka. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now. Radio Fiji 1 and Domoiviti. I have a radio Fiji 1. 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 I have a radio Fiji 